Hello, hello everyone! So today, after a lot of demands, I will show you how I incorporate and render my characters into my webtoon background. So you already have a full like webtoon process video right here, but I wanted to make a sequel of my last video where I showed you how to use Snaptoon and so how to create your own webtoon backgrounds. By the way, this is my own way to make my render, but of course you can totally use this video to find your own way to do it and change anything you need or anything you want but today I want to show you how I'm doing it in a simple and quick way especially since now I'm a part of the webtoon originals <laughs> I don't have a date yet but I'm working on my first episodes lately so I will now make only one video in a month and not twice as I was doing lately because I have a lot of work <laughs> and also for you to know I will only talk about the classic panels not the different ones you can find in the webtoon only the characters in the background backgrounds ones and I'm not sure that this is necessary to show you how to make the other ones it's just another creative way to make panels and today the subject is to incorporate the characters into the background so there's no need to talk about the other types of panels right now so let's get into the video so I first start off by making my storyboard to have the idea of what screenshots I have to take and so where to place my backgrounds because obviously if you don't have the idea of what your chapter will look like you cannot know where to place your backgrounds and after I made my storyboard I make my backgrounds in Snaptoon again the last video is about how to use Snaptoon all the links will be in the description by the way every sources or every videos I'm going to mention will be in the description don't worry once again, if you want to take a closer look on how I make my backgrounds, you can just check out the last video I made. Then it is time to incorporate my backgrounds into my webtoon page. So I first create my panels and I fill the panels with a gray base. I usually create two layers of gray base because some of my backgrounds overlap and it's easier to make it this way. This way I will not have to make some cuts if they overlap. And also some of them are made with gradients to make the background appear gradient. Then I take my screenshots and copy paste it onto my page, so above my gray base, with a clipping mask. This is a tiny icon that you have right above your layers. Finally, I just place my backgrounds when they're needed. By the way, I take this opportunity to place some 3D objects. The second big step is to make a better sketch. So the storyboard was more to know where to place the camera. And this sketch is to place your character better and to really incorporate them into the background. And now that this is done, I simply make the line work. Okay, so for the flats, I first start off by making a gray base as I did for the boxes and I will put my flats over it as a clipping mask and for the flats, I separate the hair, the skin and the other things like clothes, etc. because I will put some blush on the skin and a gradient and light strokes on the hair and I put everything, so the gray base and the flats into the same folder. I do it this way to be able to put the shadows onto the all layers of flats and not each color separately this is a mistake I was doing at the very beginning of my webtoon journey and let me tell you this is really way quicker this way. Shading every color separately is really way longer. Plus at the end I also put the tiny light strokes on the eyes like over the line work and to give the line work a bit more depth I just duplicate it and blur it a little bit so I keep the first layer of line work, the classic one and I put another one like the exact same one but blurred on top of it at 70% of opacity just to you know give a kind of like 3d effect to the line work now let's get into the main subject so before anything else, I highly recommend to do as I did here. I made a whole line work page of my webtoon to find my own style and to be able to know where I'm going with my webtoon style and my webtoon colors. So I really recommend doing this just to be sure that all your webtoon will be consistent. So let's shade. And for you to know, here is the list of the layers I will use. So the first layer is a multiply layer that I put on the wall flat just to blend the characters into the background. I usually take the background color but I already made a color palette as you can see for each mood and each time of the day. I have some codes to know what colors to use for what and if you're curious I'm just gonna give you the meaning of my code here. It's not an official code or anything so you can totally create your own code to know what you're drawing. So the second layer is the lights layer. I create an add glow layer on top of the multiply one and with this I draw lights 
it's with a pencil tool or a filling tool. Now let's talk about the third layer that, to be honest, I forget a lot. <laughs> it is the rim light layer. This is really optional. This is just to emphasize your character and make it popping out from the backgrounds while actually blending the character into the background. So this is pretty paradoxical. So I add an add glow layer again. I will use a lot of add glow, I'm sorry. So I usually take the background color, place a tiny gradient and draw some light strokes on the edges of the character. Now to be honest, you can totally stop here, at least for the shades. This is really quick and pretty enough to let it like this. But if you want, let's go further into the process. So personally, I always make the character pop out from the background by creating a layer of shine. I mean, technically two layers, but as the line work, it's actually one layer that I duplicate and blur it. So this will be again an add glow layer that this time I put above the flats and above the line work. So I just simply draw lights on the edges of the characters. And by the way, if you don't want to get lost or mess up with your layers, you can totally put a color on the layers. This is something I really like about CSP. It's the way that you can put colors on the layers because personally, when there is too much words, I'm just, I'm just getting confused. So if you're the same, just color your layers. I swear it's just super useful. Now that this is done, I this time create a glow dodge layer to create the sunlight with the circle gradient. So it's the classical gradient, but you just choose the circle shape. So I put this layer above the flats, but also above the line work layer. Plus to make it look like an illustration, I put on the same type of layer, again above the line works, etc. I put light strokes, light brushes and dust. If you're curious, I will give you the link of the icon brushes I am using for the lights. This is really cheap, but super super useful to use and it's super pretty and it's just giving the tiny effect to your panels. So this is usually done for me at this point, at least for the shades. There is another step that is not the shades, but I will get back to it later. So I don't put too much effort onto my rendering process, just to be quick, especially now that I will have to make original chapters a week. But there is still a step that I sometimes do, especially for my money shops panels. And there is another step that I don't do but I'm still gonna show you because it can be a really great idea for some of you. I mean this is not like a super new idea but this is still something that can be really useful. So the first step I want to show you is something to really finish at 100% your panel. So I really recommend doing this on your money shots panels to emphasize their importance but this way your webtoon is already pretty enough. Don't worry this is already really good enough and we're really quick to do. It personally takes me 6 or 7 hours to color 60 panels, so I'm just really happy with the result. So what I do, I add another multiplying layer just on top of the other one, like the really first layer we put, and I just create tiny shadows as I show you here. I think this is a great way to really finish your character rending. Now here is the really optional option that I personally don't do, but I just want to show you in case you weren't already doing it. It's to simply create a two colors gradient or a three colors gradient. So it works the same as the classical gradient, but instead of having one color leading to transparent color, you have two colors. So you just have to put it over everything. So your characters and your backgrounds. This is a tiny <laughs> optional thing you can do. Not to simply change the mood or the time of the day, you just have to change the colors. I mean, of course, sometimes you have to change the point where the light is coming from but you got the idea. Now that you know all of this just feel free to create your own suit of layers and your own way to color your webtoon. This is my personal way to do it because this is how I'm working with my backgrounds and with my characters to blend everything together so just feel free to find your own style obviously. Well, now that the shades are done, let's put the tiny cherry on top of the cake. So first I take my line work and my flat layers and folders and I put everything into the same folder to create a sort of backup just in case you have to change anything after that. Then I duplicate the folder and hide the first one. This second folder, you have to merge the folder. So click on layers and merge the selected layers. And ta-da, you have your base to blur. So the blur can totally emphasize the faces, the expressions or any part of your panel you want to emphasize but you can also create a speed effect etc so just have fun with this tool Voila, 
that's all for this video I was to be honest super happy to make it the render part is my favorite part of the webtoon process to be honest so as always if you have any other demands or any ideas of other future videos you can totally ask in the comments even if to be honest I already have a long long list of videos to do and once again I will now make one video a month not twice because I have a lot of work so hope you will understand that's it don't forget to subscribe and follow me on my social uh, especially because soon there will be my art books on my online shop just saying <laughs> so that's it see you in the next video bye bye Well, now that 